Midnight Ad. All right. Tonight, we are going to learn how to get a Mac to read to you. Because everyone needs a friend, even if it is a laptop without a soul. So, we're going to first tell you why you want your computer to read to you. These are a few reasons. You might come up with your own. Using the text-to-speak function on a Mac, it can help you proofread things. If you're sending that email and you're angry, you might want to listen to it again. It can give your eyes a little rest from staring at a computer screen, uh, like many people do. And it also can help you hear errors that you might not have seen. Because, you know, we've all been there. You're writing a paper. You've read it a thousand times. You turn it in, and a week later you see errors, and you're thinking, oh, man. So let's get started with this process. So step one, first thing you need to do is to go to system preferences. This is usually in the dock at the bottom, but once you're there, you need to click on dictation and speech. If you can't find it, just type in speech in the search window at the top right and it'll pop up. Now step two, when the dictation and speech window pops up, it might be on the dictation tab at the top middle so be sure to click on the text to speech tab right next to it once you are at the text to speech uh, part of the window be sure to click on the box that says speak selected text when the key is pressed current key option plus escape you can change the current key with the uh, change key button right to the right of that but make sure that's checked or it's not going to work. Now, step three, you get to select your voice. If this is the first time you're opening it, you're going to only have a few voices available to you. All right? So go to the bottom of that drop box under System Voice and you're going to click on Customize. Step four, you get to select the voices you want to hear. Once you click the boxes, you can also preview them by pressing play. And then when you're finished, click OK. I really like the British English and South African English voices. Uh, to me, they're a little more clearly spoken than the rest. Uh, this might be because I grew up on BBC shows on PBS late at night. But I think they're a little bit easier to understand. And step five. You go to the text you want to hear read to you, you highlight it with your mouse or of course your cursor in the shift key, then you hit option plus escape, and voila, it works. But here's step five and a half. You do have another option. After you highlight the text, right click the highlighted text. It's going to give you different options. You can click on speech and add to iTunes as a spoken track. That's pretty cool because what it does is it makes an audio file of what you've highlighted. So if you do that you can take your paper for a walk and listen to it as you go and of course step six you can rejoice. Rejoice with gladness because you did it and of course you did because you're awesome and awesome is as awesome does. Thank you for watching this, and now what I want to do is I want to show you as I click through it on my computer, okay? So some of you might want to just watch me do it. So here we go. First thing you do, you go down here to System Preferences. Oh, that's cheating. Let's go back. All right, try it again. Click on System Preferences, and when you do, it's going to look something like this. Dictation and speech is at the bottom. If for some reason you can't find it, just click up here in the search window and you click speech and it's going to pop up. All right. Or it's going to be right here. So I'm going to click dictation and speech and here I am. I don't want dictation. I want text to speech. So I'm going to click on that and then I get to choose my voice. Woohoo! And you have tons of different voices to choose from, okay? Yay! And these are actually pretty accurate, I think, on the way the pronunciation is. They have some silly ones, so if you click on 
deranged or something, well, it's going to sound deranged. So uh, make sure you're choosing the one you want. Once again, I like to go down to English and choose one of these. You can listen to Fiona and feel like you're watching Shrek. Um, I'm a big fan of the Tessa one just because to me it's very clear. It's downloading right now, so I'm actually going to flip over here to Karen and say OK just for now because I want to show you how it works. Once you do this and this guy is clicked, you're good to go. So I'm just going to shut it down and then I'll go over here to Google Chrome and looky here. I have something already highlighted. But if you don't remember how to do that, you just go to where you want to highlight, click and drag, and voila. And I'm going to hit option escape. It was a bright cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. Winston Smith, his chin nuzzled into his breast in an effort to escape the bar wind, slipped quickly through the glass door. Yeah, and not only does option escape hit play, but it also stops it. You know, so if you want to just stop it, because let's say you highlighted all of this, well, you can. Holy cow, that's a lot. But we're just going to do it just to show off that we can. Woo. So I'm going to go to the top. And, oh no, it missed the T. I'm going to try it again, because i got to have that T in there. Woo. Now I'm going to show you how to make it into a iTunes file. I want to left click, right click, sorry, not left click, right click, and then add to iTunes as a spoken track. I'm going to click that, and then some magic is happening in the background, and it's going to let me choose the voice. Like, I want to I wanna hear a, a British male voice for his book. And of course, it doesn't show you which one's the British male voice. Dope. So keep in mind which one you want before you do this. I'm going to click on. Do, do, do. Y'all are waiting on me thinking, why didn't this guy hurry up? I want to click on Thomas because, well, that's my name. And that, that has to be good. So I'm going to save it as text to speech. It's 1984. Chapter 1. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You could audition. Yes, and it needs to have a computer that we talk to you. Oh, no, not at all. That's terrible. I'm going for Bruce. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? No. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? That's better. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? Do you see that? That's the American English one. That's terrible. I'm going to go back to old, old Daniel. Because he's sounding a little clear. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? Yes, it is. Because I can understand that. You click OK. And then you wait. And somewhere within the Mac, some, some sorcery is taking place somewhere. But it's basically turning all of this into an audio file. How cool is that? And then when it does, it's going to pop up in your iTunes. All right, so it did finish recording. It's all the way down here. It was a bright cold day in April, and the clocks were striking. And there you go. Winston Smith. I now have like a book on tape in an effort to escape the vile wind. and the computer the did it for me. Of victory mansions, though not quickly enough to prevent a swell of gritty dust from entering along with him. 